Hello, in this video we're going to be talking about Log4j, what it is and how to exploit it. Um, we're going to be going over how to set up a test environment and then also move into how to execute a proof of concept to show this vulnerability actually works. If you haven't heard by now, um, this is one of the worst zero days and vulnerabilities that has been discovered uh, to date and it's literally taking the entire cybersecurity community by storm. What Log4j is exactly is a uh, Java library that is reused uh, in a variety of different applications. And software reuse is actually a pretty common coding practice, but unfortunately what happens with that is you're trusting someone else's uh, coding. You're trusting their code to be secure, and inherently you could possibly be creating yourself vulnerabilities, which in this case is what happened. Uh, and it's so severe, the common vulnerability scoring system, CVSS, gave it a 10 out of 10, meaning that this is serious. Uh, in the lab that we're going to be setting up, we're going to be uh, basically going over a proof of concept that was posted on GitHub. I'll put all the links in the description. And from what you're going to see, the most difficult part about this exploit is setting up your lab. Doing the actual exploit takes minutes, um, if even. All right, so the first thing we're going to want to do is get uh, VirtualBox from Oracle. Plus the links in the description down here. I don't know the Windows host one. Next, you're going to want to get Kali Linux. Um, you're going to want the version that's compatible with VirtualBox. Those are going to use to make our testing environment work. have VirtualBox installed, Kali is downloaded. Um, you may or may not need to download WinRAR in order to uh, open this up. So I'm going to go ahead and get that now too. And now when it's extracted, you will be able to open it. And you're gonna import it. So by default it's gonna give you uh, about two gigs of memory for your VM. Um, I think it's gonna give mine a boost to like four or six, maybe eight, depending on how much you got available. And in this case, we'll go ahead and make it. And by default, Cali, Cali. Okay, now that we've got Cali up and running, we're going to need to get a couple things installed just to make sure we're ready to go to do the exploit. Let's get ourselves into root. And then we're going to first get uh, clone and what we're going to clone is 
this GitHub page, or this GitHub URL, right here. Okay. So now we're downloading the contents. And in a moment, we'll be able to travel to that directory and we're going to work on it. Let's do an ls, see where we stand. And we can see right here we have our log4j shell poc. All right, so let's do a cd log4j shell poc. All right, I'm in there. If you go to this poc page, you'll uh, be able to see the uh, Java versions that we'll have to get along with the, uh, the link that we'll need. So I'll copy this down. Get that out of there. And now we're looking for 8U20. And you're going to need to create an account for this. I'm just going to sign in and get the download started. Okay, so now we're ready to run our code. So we'll specify Python 3 poc.py, which is the code that we're running. User IP, which is localhost. For the web port, we're going to use 8000. And the port that we're listening on for netcat is going to be 9001. Okay, so now as you can see here, we have a web server opened up. And we had LDAP listening on port 1389. And from this string of code, basically what it breaks down to is going to use the JNDI protocol to communicate with LDAP on the local host at that port of 1389. So let's go ahead and copy this. We're going to go back over to our netcat listener. Okay, and as you can see here, now what it's going to do is once we run that code, uh, it's basically going to reach back out and it's going to run uh, this exploit.class file, uh, which in this case uh, opens up a reverse shell back to our machine. So if we open up netcat again, as you can see here, we have a connection. And let's see who we are. We're root. So as you can see there, just goes to show you how uh, severe this vulnerability is. Um, unauthenticated access, literally remote over the network, don't even need to be at the machine. Uh, you can get full privileges onto it and basically do whatever you want. You now own it. And that's that.